Well, hi there, and welcome to this video on Azure Communication Services and how you can get started using it in the Azure portal. My name is Dan Wallin. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft, and I'm excited to walk you through some of these different features. So let's jump right in. So we're gonna start things off by talking about how do you get started creating the initial ACS or Azure Communication Services resource in the Azure portal. Now you can do a lot more than that though. They also have some nice samples you can go through in the Quick Starts Blade. So whether you're looking to do SMS or calling with audio video or chat or something else related to maybe telephony, you can do that right in the Azure portal and they'll help you get started with that as well. Now we're also gonna jump into a token generator. This is useful when you wanna try out a feature. I'm gonna show that towards the end of this video. And you just need a quick user identifier and a token so that you can try out a given feature. Very nice, very helpful. The other thing we're gonna talk about is how you can get started acquiring a phone number. Now we'll have some other videos on more specifics related to phone and telephony and SMS and things along those lines, but I'm gonna show you where you would go to get started with that. And then we're also gonna look at diagnostics and logging and how you can get started creating that resource so that you can get insights into what's going on with your Azure Communication Services resources. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the Azure portal and let's kick this off. Navigating to portal.azure.com, I've gone to the All Services screen. And from here, I can either type communication services up in the top search bar, or we can filter the services. So let's go ahead and do that. And as I type communication, you'll notice communication services. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an ACS or Azure Communication Services demo. So I'll click on create. And from here, we'll pick my resource group. Now, the next thing is, what do you wanna call your Azure Communication Services resource itself? Now, it could be anything that's valid, of course. I'm just gonna do ACS demo one, two, three, four to make it unique. Looks like that's good. And then we can pick the data location. Right now, you'll see several different options in here. I'm gonna pick United States, but I could pick any location where I want the data to be stored at rest, of course. Because Azure Communication Services is a global resource, that means data isn't bounded to a single region. For example, if you have a user in Japan making a call to Mexico, call data is gonna travel between those two endpoints. The data location allows you to specify where that data is gonna be stored when it's at rest. So now that everything's ready, let's click review and create. And this will kick off the process of doing that actual deployment. All right, it looks like my deployment's complete, so let's go ahead and go to the resource. Before moving on, I wanna mention that if you have feedback about the portal experience or Azure Communication Services more specifically, you can pass your feedback along by clicking the Give Feedback link you see here. Now on this overview screen, you'll see information about the general ACS resource, including the endpoint, which I'll demonstrate momentarily. You can see some other information over here as well, but you'll notice I can get a phone number, I can get started, and then I can view and generate access keys. Now, before we look really at any of that, let's go over to our blades on the left and we'll see the normal suspects up here towards the top. But one I wanna point out is that we have a quick start. And if we go to the quick start blade, you'll notice that we can learn how to work with our access tokens. We can work with identities and use those tokens for testing. I'm gonna show you that coming up. And then we can also get telephone numbers, call a phone, send SMS, all the telephony type of functionality you might want and also do things with voice and chat. So what's really nice is you have a great place to start. You can download this demo, plug in a connection string, which I'll show you in a moment, and you could be off and running really, really quickly. Now moving on down, you also notice I have keys. Now the endpoint I showed earlier is gonna be here as well, but you're also gonna need your connection string at some point. For the demos I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go about it a different way, but if you wanna download any of the demonstrations that are available in the Quick Start, then you could just plug in this connection string and be off and running very quickly, as I mentioned. Now, what I'm gonna use, though, is this identities and user access tokens. Now, this is great if you just want a really quick way to get a user 
and then an access token. So let's say we want to do voice over IP type stuff as well as chat. Well, I can generate a user identity and a user access token. And then if I hit it again, you'll see it'll change. It does have an expiration, of course. So this is for temporary kind of testing use cases only. But I'm going to use this just a little bit later, and you'll see it provides a really easy way to get started. Now, if we go to phone numbers, I'm not going to set one up in this video, but I want to show you that you could get your own local or toll-free number. So if I click on get a number, I now can walk through the setup process and I can set up a number because I want to send SMS messages or I want to make calls or receive calls or whatever that may be. So we can come on in, pick whatever we'd like for the country or region, and then I can say, well, I'm going to be making calls or sending SMS messages. Currently for SMS, I'd need to pick a toll-free number, and then I can pick, am I just sending or am I also receiving SMS messages? You'll see that down here. Now, when it comes to calling, though, you can also set up local numbers, and then that would allow you to call out or receive calls as well. And you'll see those options down here. We'll have more details about that in a later video, but for now, I just want you to know that you can set up your own numbers if you'd like. Now, in addition to that, we can come down to diagnostic settings and we can actually set this up so that we can monitor using Azure monitoring services. So I can say add diagnostic setting. Let's say we want to enable just about everything here. And now I can send the logs that are going to come from this to a log analytics workspace, to a storage account, or we can even stream to Event Hub or send to a partner solution. Now, the partner solution will give you different options if you click on the docs like Kafka, or you could use Elastic or something like that. We recommend that you use Log Analytics because it's more full featured. Sending logs and metrics to a Log Analytics workspace allows you to analyze them with other monitoring data collected by Azure Monitor using powerful log queries and also to use other Azure Monitor features such as alerts and visualizations like Azure Monitor workbooks. So that's an example of how we can get started. Now there's obviously a lot more we can do, but let's kind of switch gears to demo mode now, and let's talk about how we could use some of these features. Now that you've seen the core features in the Azure portal, let's apply some of those, especially the token generator I showed you, to some of the demos that are available online. So if we go to the link that you saw in the previous slide, aka.ms slash ACS dash UI dash library, that'll take us to a demo page. Now I showed this in a previous video, but now we're going to use some of the identity and token information you can get from the portal. So if we come on down, you'll see composites and I'm going to click on chat composite. If we go to basic example, doesn't do much right now. It says, please provide an access token, user ID for each participant, and we need an endpoint URL. Well, fortunately, the portal will give us all of that. So notice we need the user and the bot. There's going to be two people chatting here. One will be a bot, but then we also need the endpoint. Now, the endpoint we've already seen, but if we want to get the user identity and token, we can come back to identities and user access tokens. We can click on whatever we'd like. In this case, I just need chat. So I'll hit generate. And now that's going to generate a user identity that I can use here. We can just copy that. And it's going to generate a token that'll have the permissions to build a do chat. So let's go ahead and copy these in first. So I'm going to put this as the first user's identifier. We'll grab the user token here. And then we're going to do the same thing for the bot. So we'll come on back. I'm going to hit generate again. That gives me a different user. We'll paste that in. And then likewise, we'll just paste in the token. All right, now still doesn't light up, but that's easy to fix. All we really need to do now is get the endpoint. So we can get the endpoint in a couple ways. One would be to go back to the overview. The other would be to go back to keys. I'm going to go there and we can copy the endpoint. And then I'll just put Dan as my display name. And there we go. Now it lights up. You can see that the bot's now chatting with me. So we could go ahead and carry on a chat. You know, hi there, bot. 
And then the bot can chat back and we can have a little basic conversation going on here. So now that you've seen that, you know how to get started with the portal. We know how to use some of the features of the portal. And now in some of the videos coming up, we're going to dive into more of the ACS core features that are available. So we'll look at SMS, telephony, chat, and others as we move along. Well, thanks for tuning into this video. I hope you found it informative and I hope it gets you started using the Azure portal and creating your first Azure Communication Services resource. You can get more information about Azure Communication Services at the link you see here, aka.ms slash communication dash services dash overview. Check it out for a lot of great docs on this topic and stay tuned as we continue to roll out more videos related to Azure Communication Services.